Can you hear me now? Maybe. Let me know if you guys can hear me. I've had a little bit of a mic issue. Um, so we're going to do a little bit. We're just going to hang out for a little bit, um, see who comes in. I know I didn't I pre-scheduled this live stream, um, but we're just going to hang out for a little bit. If you guys have questions, it can be reef related, non-reef related. It doesn't really matter. Just kind of hang out for a little bit. Travis, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't really sure if I was going to do the stream. I just walked in the door from training and um, <clears throat> had to take a quick shower to like snap out of it so, so I could get online here. You can tell my voice is kind of going. I definitely started to lose my voice. Um, going to relax the rest of the week and, and then kind of hit it on Monday again. So, uh, let me go to get my other chat up and then we'll get started, but go ahead and, uh, you know, whatever questions you have again, reef related or non reef related, uh, you can ask whatever. Let me go ahead and pull this up. Um, All right, am I losing like connection here with my mic? For some reason, it keeps bumping out. All right, can you guys hear me now? I had to reconnect the mic. Let me know uh, if you can hear me or not. Um, for some reason, it keeps disconnecting. I don't know why. I just plugged it back in. So that's a new problem. But anyways, guys, uh, hopefully everybody's doing well. You're having a good holiday month. Really? You can hear me? Cool. Thanks. Appreciate it, Mark. Um, yeah, so it's, I don't know if this is going to disconnect. I'm just going to talk, and I mean, I'm going to try to keep an eye on, on it if it disconnects. If you if you just stop hearing me, um, just let me know in the comment section. But um, yeah just been kind of a long month. It's been a very long month. And by the way, appreciate all the support on these sales guys. Um, everything's just kind of moving pretty well. I'm surprised given that it's the end of the year and you guys are still supporting the channel. Definitely, definitely appreciate that. Um, I might put a promo code in this video. I, I don't think I've done one this month. Have I? I don't think so. I feel bad about that. Let me go to check the questions, see if we got anything coming in. <clears throat>
Hey guys, well, uh, I don't know if it's working yet, but uh, I just restarted the computer real quick. <clears throat> Let me know if you can hear me. Let's see if I can pull up that video. Get the everything back to normal. Yay. Okay, cool. Let me know if you guys can hear me. That was weird. Cool. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. It just kept kicking me. I was doing some mining on this PC, and um, I don't think my Nortons liked it, so it, uh, it's it been booting me on everything. So I got to go through and, and put in the <clears throat> exception codes into Norton's firewall because it keep, keeps messing with my miner. But anyways, yeah, so let me scroll back up. So yeah, the question was, uh, what's your favorite Christmas movies? Let me get back up here. Mm, yeah, so it's definitely the Christmas Vacation, the Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger and... Trying to think of another one that I really like. I don't know. There's a there's a, there's a couple more. I'll, if I remember them, I'll let you know. <clears throat> What's up, man? Those two pieces I got from you are uh, acclimated well and thriving. Merry Christmas to you. Hey, no problem. Merry Christmas. <laughs> I have an RL buddy, and it's still reading silicates after it's filtered, uh, but still reading zero TDS. Is uh, is what is what could be the problem? Okay. So the RO buddy is pretty cool for like basic filtration. I would not recommend it for um, <clears throat> for like a permanent solution for a reef tank. I just don't think it has enough filters to really get everything out, especially carbon block, because your carbon blocks are going to be the ones that are kind of uh, pulling that stuff out. Also, um, I mean, I don't know. I think it holds a regular membrane, right? I haven't I haven't seen one in a, quite a while. Let me look it up real quick. I'm pretty sure they hold a regular membrane. RO buddy, did you know? Do you know what? Uh, what, what version you got <clears throat> i mean the price is really good on them i mean they really are uh what is this this is the basic one for like 70 bucks ro buddy yeah so this is like the 70 dollar one and uh it's 50 gallon per day and i'm trying to see what filters it comes with because i know that they didn't come with everything so this is your di so you got the di the membrane the carbon block and the sediment cartridge so um i just feel like you need the additional carbon block usually the two carbon blocks are really helpful for getting all that extra stuff out um and i just feel that it just those those uh those filters are just not up to par when it comes to um did i exit out of that um filtering properly so i would definitely consider getting a better unit um, especially if your ro water or your tap water is just really full of silicates and stuff like that um, because you might be getting zero TDS, but you might be getting heavy, heavy, heavy metals coming through the carbon blocks, or you might be getting stuff coming through on the membrane because it's worn out. Um, you know, zero TDS is good, but it's always good to double check, uh, your ICP tests on that. So I would say get a, get a different one or a bigger one if you can. And I even know that you can probably, with the way it's set up, you could probably attach regular, like if you got a dual chamber, chamber, like a DI resin one, you could probably put regular filters in that and just attach it <clears throat> depending on your water pressure. Yeah, I'm losing my voice, guys. So um, if you're having a difficult time hearing me, I apologize. Uh, to do, to do, what's your thoughts on doing a downsizing from a 150 to a 60 gallon all in one? Doing it for budget reasons. There's nothing wrong with that. Budgets are, are where it's at. I'll tell you guys right now, <clears throat> 2021, I hope, I mean, it was not a bad year, but I hope 2022 gets better. <laughs> but I mean, gas prices are ridiculous. So I understand the whole budgeting thing. I surely do. I mean, I got attorney fees will make it throw up but um yeah so i don't think there's any issues with that i'd say uh, save the rock structure that you like or, or build it the way you want um obviously you're not gonna be able to fit all the rock you want in there um definitely make sure you save room for coral growth and um you know just kind of enjoy the the fresh start uh there's definitely nothing wrong with downsizing a lot of people do it um yeah i don't think there's any issue with that at all <clears throat> your mic and uh, your mic in my pH temp probe are being, <laughs> yeah, pH, pH, uh, or sorry, pH probes are uh, notorious for being a pain. You got to calibrate them pretty often, especially like, I try to say every six months, sometimes I don't, I usually get out to like once a year, but you definitely should calibrate them, especially in your calcium reactor. Uh, not so much in the main display. I don't really care too much about that. But calcium reactor pH probes need to be higher quality and calibrated pretty often. Let's see. What's up, guys? What's up, everyone? Mike went out again. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> We're getting back, back down here. <laughs> uh, I was like, who's this fish and hex guy talking in the chat? That's me. 
Uh, maybe call it a night and enjoy your holiday. Yeah, I uh, I got a bunch of stuff I got to do downstairs tonight, and tomorrow's gonna be a pretty busy day. Um, I was hoping to hit the gym in the morning. I have to double check to see what the schedule's like, but um, I got to get another another workout in before Monday, so we'll see. I got a lot of stuff I got to get done. <clears throat> Uh, even without taking or talking, just watching the 300 is peaceful. Yeah, when it used to look good, <laughs> when it actually had coral. Sometimes I watch this video and just appreciate it. I'll tell you right now, my coral situation would be a thousand times different than what it currently is. Right now, I'm just relying on dis to grow out on these tubs and these low boys to be able to have coral for sale. If I'd never had Big Bertha, and let's just back up. So if I made some different decisions, so no Big Bertha and um, did my aquascape a little bit different, which I'll make separate videos on this, I, would, um, I wouldn't I would have the current cor coral situation. What I mean by that is when Big Bertha knocks down an entire colony, let's say she knocks down the big uh, WWC here in the middle, uh, middle left rock structure. When she knocks that entire colony down, I have to frag the entire colony to be able to, you know, keep it alive because I can't just throw it in on its side inside a tank and, and hope that it, you know, stays alive, you know, light wise. So what I was doing before she was destroying colonies is just going in there and trimming, like trimming the hedges, getting 15, 20 frags at a time, leaving the entire colony intact, allowing it to grow and, you know, just grow more heads, you know, more growth. But when she knocks an entire colony out, I have, I'm forced to frag that entire colony and I'm not getting any growth from it at that point because it's just frags. So I have a big sale. I sell all the frags. And then when that happens to every colony in the tank, I eventually don't have enough coral to even grow to sell anymore. So in hindsight, if I never had Big Bertha, this tank would still be full. Okay, I'd still have a ton of coral sales going on. It'd be a ton of coral ready to go. And um, we wouldn't have the issues that we're having now. So... Uh, my next build will not have Big Bertha or any fish capable of getting her size. And uh, yeah, that's, that's a, it's a crazy hundreds of thousands of dollars of a lesson learned, um, unfortunately. But, you know, it is what it is. It's just, you know, I'm glad I figured it out now and not on the permanent tank. So, <clears throat> yeah, let me get back over here to the screen. Uh, to do, oh, I see what you did. Now I have to stare at the coral. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, that's me telling you I'm restarting. Be right back. I agree with Timothy Drake. Uh, cancel the stream and enjoy the holiday. Nah, it's okay. I'll be here. I'm going to probably do like 10 or 15 more minutes and head out. Um, I'm just going to make dinner and get some work done. I uh, just got dinos that uh, disappear at night and reappear during the day. Uh, will a three-day blackout hurt my SPS coral and anything to consider with lights uh, when turning them back on? <clears throat> well... I don't think blackouts are really good for dino um, because once you turn the lights back on, they're just going to kick back in. I think you need to find the source of the issue for the dino. So first identifying what species it is and going from there. So if you have dino uh, nine out of 10 times and, and granted, there are other species that are not you know, related to nutrients, but nine out of 10 times is because your nutrients are too low at one point. Okay. Or you had algae in the tank that were again, consuming nutrients, call, causing them to be low and dino to kind of show its face. So, I would say make sure your nutrients are in check. Uh, Three-day blackouts. I mean, if you really want to do it, you can, but just be prepared when you turn the light, lights back on, the dino's going to just creep its head up. If anything, you're going to cause unnecessary stress. Now, three days with lights off on an SPS tank is not really a big deal. Um, I mean, your fish are going to get a, a nice nap because the lights aren't going to be on. Plus, you're probably going to wrap the tank so light can't get in. But, uh, yeah, <clears throat> I, I mean, you can. I, I don't think it really helps in the long run. I think it just delays the inevitable. But um, if it makes you feel better, you can do it. Uh, personally, I would just focus on the source, ma manual removal, and uh, add a little bit of additional flow, get in there and dust off the rocks, clean off the glass, you know, dust up the sand bed, whatever you got to do to keep it moving in, in the water column, change out the filter socks, and then get your nutrients where they should be and go from there. But, you know, if, if you want to do the lighting thing, you can. Mm. Also, what else would you recommend trying to get rid of the dinos? I've heard bacteria dosing in UV. I'm currently turkey blasting the rocks, changing out the mechanical filtration every two hours. So, um, like I mentioned, find the source. You can, 
you know, there's nothing wrong with a UV. UV sterilizer is good. It's going to help damage the cells of the bacteria, which are the, or sorry, the dyno, which will then eliminate it over time. Um, it is helpful. It's not a one fix thing. Uh, mechanical filtration, yeah, removing that stuff, uh, using a filter sock holder to siphon the dyno out into a filter sock and then, uh, you know, cleaning that, you know, getting it out of there. But uh, yeah, increasing the flow and um, getting, you know, getting your nutrients back up, manual removal. That's that's what I recommend for you. Blessings, fam. How uh, Happy holidays, blessings, uh, abundance <clears throat> to all. Hey, what's up? Appreciate you being here, man. Uh, can you explain how... To, 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 let me get back here. Brad says, can you explain how uh, set up calc to push into a system instead of pulling uh, with a dosing pump? Can you uh, do it uh, without a stirrer? So when it comes to dosing calc, um, I've done it two ways. The first one was with an ATO. So you would take your teaspoon or whatever per gallon or whatever the calculation is based on your consumption. You put in your ATO and then you would elevate the pump off the bottom of your ATO container about two inches. That way you're not sucking up the calc slurry and ruining, ruining the pump prematurely. So that was the first way and the first method of dosing calc that I've ever done. And I did that on the, on the 125. The second method was using the dose pump from Apex, from the Neptune Apex, pulling water from my ATO reservoir, which is, you know, RODI water, pulling it and putting it into the bottom of a calc stirrer, which then allowed it to bubble up through the calc um, slurry and then overflowing into the um, chato, the refugium. Okay. So those are the two methods that I used. Um, I know, I know that you can, <clears throat> you know, pull with like the Kamor or whatever it is. You can do it that way if you so choose. But um, I think that the best method is to use something like a calc stirrer, but then just pulling from your ATO and letting it overflow back into your uh, sump or whatever you have set up. So I think that's the best method. Um, I don't personally like pulling calc slurry or any kind of calc solution through a pump because I find that it's uh, it's just too hard on the pump, hard on the tubing. It's just not good because even with the half inch tubing that is just the overflow connection from the calc stirrer, that gets corroded and clogged up with just that with just that. So um, I think your best method is just to pull the RO water through the calc and let it overflow. Oh, look at guys, look on the screen here. This is the fish that my eel ate the uh, other week. Rest in peace, buddy. Probably was in there hosting at the time of snacks. And by the way, guys, I don't regret that eel at all. Quite a few of you were giving me shit, giving me shit about having them in there with all the fish. Hey, man, it's nature. I mean, I I didn't think he was going to be super crazy, you know, given that um, Reggie wasn't even that aggressive when it came to missing a few days of eating. But uh, this guy's obviously got an appetite. So it is what it is at this point. I'll, I'll consider, um, you know, if he starts going after like some of my bigger fish, um, then I'll consider removing him. But we'll see what he does. I usually keep an eye on him at night. Anyways, and speaking of that, I'm going to go feed him in a little bit. Uh, is it just me or does it not feel like Christmas this year? Yeah, it definitely does not feel like Christmas. <clears throat> not even close. Um, but it is. My wallet says so. Uh, best pH test kit or probe thoughts on oz oz ozone? <clears throat> Dang, I got to clear my throat. Shit. Man, my voice is going. Um, best pH test kit. I know that Hannah has a pretty decent pH test kit. To be honest with you, I don't really... The only pH reading that I truly care about is in my calcium reactor. Other than that, I don't care. Um, I don't think it's even worth buying the HANA tester for it. And um, I just I just think it's a waste of money, personally. I mean, who cares what your pH is in your main display? Do what you can. I'll sum it up this way. Do what you can to make sure that your pH is elevated as much as possible. I.e., you know, if you want your refugium to be on at night on the opposite cycle of your lights, so you can pull carbon dioxide out of the tank. Dosing calc is always good. Making sure your skimmer's plumbed outside, pulling fresh air in. That's always good. Um, putting your power heads to the surface of the water, kind of agitated, agitating the water. Is that the word I look for? Which allows CO2 to escape the tank, um, you know, with gas exchange. So if you're doing those things, then I don't think it's even, I mean, who cares what the pH reading is at that point? I mean... I don't know. That's my opinion on it. I think a lot of people, no, you know, no offense to you, Charles, or anything like that. And I'm not singling you out, but I think a lot of people get caught up in pH. 
uh, because I got to be at 8.3 or my coral's not going to grow. The video of this 300 <clears throat> before I, uh, you know, took it apart, that coral never saw 8.3 ever, that tank, and it grew out super fast within a year or so, like super, super fast. So, um, yeah, I, will, I really wouldn't worry about it too much. As for ozone, never used it, don't have an opinion on it. Um, I think it's just one one more thing that you add to the mix that could go wrong, and I don't think it's worth it. Uh, how much uh, lock line do you have in your tank? Uh, is there any RFGS connected to them? I don't, I don't know what that is. RFGS is that like uh, like to make the flow better? Is it like an attachment or something? Um, as for that lock line, I don't know how much there. I think like eight segments. The only reason why I have that much is I like to angle them um, just a little bit. But uh, I don't know. I never really thought about that. <laughs> I think it's just whatever comes with the three quarter inch or sorry, the one inch. I never really thought about it. And I don't know what FRGS is personally. So <clears throat> so what uh, RO unit do you recommend? Appreciate the help, buddy. OK, so I recommend that you go on to eBay and buy a generic um, household RODI unit or RO unit and then add your own DI unit like a, a separately. Uh, that's what I did here in the fish room and it worked out, worked out really, really well. Of course, I added a second membrane and then like a three stage DI and some, you know, pressure sensors and all stuff like that. But in our, and, uh, you know, TDS meters, but uh, your cheapest route is just to buy a generic um, like five stage from eBay for probably under a hundred dollars and then just go buy the additional uh, DI canisters in resin. That's your best bet. Cheapest route, at least for me. Um, yeah. Or you could just go to like BRS or whatever and uh, just buy a straight up unit. I don't know how much they are, but um, you know, maybe it's cheaper there. Who knows? Uh, best lighting for a four foot by two foot by two foot. Currently have two Hydro 626, but isn't touching it. Um, what's your budget? What's your budget like, man? Um, I would say if if it was my tank and I, I guess I had a decent budget, I would go with uh, two. Um, let me see. So, so four foot, four foot. I would go with two XR30s. Does that seem like a little bit of overkill? For me personally, in the way I run my tank, I think two XR30s would be good. Um, if you were on a budget, I would say two XR15s with a T5 hybrid combo. So it would be four T5 bulbs, like a, a aquatic life fixture with two XR15s, I think would be the minimum for me. Uh, if you don't want to do the T5s, I, I would say two XR30s. That would be my my go-to um it might be a little overkill but then again i kind of like a lot of light on my system so that's my opinion uh when upgrading from a three foot tank to a five foot tank uh using the current rock and adding new dry rock does the new dry rock need to be bleached um i don't know what you mean by that so are you buying like dirty rock i would say if you're if you're taking your rock from your current system and putting it in a new tank and you're adding new rock i think you should cure that rock uh, for at least a month before adding it to the tank, just because you're going to avoid the nasty bacteria. You know, you're, you're going to have the bacteria film on there from you know, curing it. And you're not going to, you're not going to worry about like turf allergy or anything kind of getting in there underneath the lights, getting all turd looking. Um, <clears throat> but bleach wise, I'd say if you're buying dirty rock, um, I'm not a big fan of bleaching rock and cleaning it. I think, uh, <clears throat> you know, rock is a sponge and you can clean it all you want, but if you ever had a kitchen sponge, I mean, you could squeeze that damn thing. If it's been you've been using it for a while, you can squeeze that damn thing all you want. And it's still dirty. So I uh, I would say get new rock and uh, cure it for at least a month. Man, my throat. <clears throat> Let's go here. Let's see. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate the help. Dinos suck because I was I was just starting to get uh, a noticeable growth from some of the corals I got from you two months ago. Walt Disney is still alive. Also good. Glad to see it's alive. Um, yeah, <clears throat> just get your nutrients and check, man. You'll be good. Uh, Barbara says, Hey, Travis, what's the hardest coral you've had to keep? Um, the torts, which I think is pretty obvious for, for a lot of SPS people and Acropora people. I think torts, it's not so much that they're really, really difficult. It's just that, um, I don't know how to explain it. At least the ones that I've had, like, like the Ming, is it Ming tort or whatever? I found that it, it grew to the point where if a fish just touched it, it just kind of broke off and there were just pieces everywhere. So I was always picking up pieces and getting out of the tank. 
coloration was pretty decent with it. Uh, they like the lower light, but I find that I think on the grand, grand scheme of corals, um, SPS wise, torts are kind of my, meh. they work, but they're, you know, they're a deep water coral. Now, overall coral, the hardest coral that I, that I hate and actually can't grow very well. And this is going to sound really weird. Are a cans. I can't grow a cans. I don't know if my tank's not dirty enough or what, but every time, or maybe I just have too much light. Every time I put an a can in the 300 in the past, that, that joker was like, Nope, sucked right up, <laughs> turned white. It was like, not today, brother. Um, granted, the bottom glass of my tank is 250 par, so definitely not the acceptable range. Um, so maybe that's what it is. But yeah, I'd say overall, hardest coral is a can for me. But um, SPS wise, torts are kind of right up there. <clears throat> Thanks for asking. I'm uh, I'm dosing hydrogen peroxide to fight them. What dinos? Yeah, it's a temporary fix. Get your nutrients in check. If, you know, most of the time that's what it is. Hey Travis, uh, turn the freshwater bio cube I got off you back. What? Oh wait, here, Travis. Hey Travis, turn the freshwater bio cube I got off you back into a coral QT. It's not a bad idea. <clears throat> that's not a bad idea at all. I like using bio cubes as coral uh, quarantine tanks. That's actually going to be my plan for the new build: is using a couple of the larger ones. Um, for QT tanks, multi-stage QT tanks. I mean, they're really good, especially if you can just put a decent like uh, HD prime light on there and get a good rack system in there. Uh, throw like a RAS or some, something decent in there. It's a pretty nice, stable quarantine tank. For sure. For sure. <clears throat> uh, willing to use also sodium silicates as I read a lot that this helps to get them dead. What are you talking about? The dino still? I've never, never went that route. I can't give you any information on that. RFGS is random flow generators. They work well. Also can be 3D printed pretty easily. Yeah. Um, a lot of people ask me to make those like constantly. I could probably pull up a stack of emails of you guys asking me to make those. I'm not making them because I don't like stepping on other 3D printers balls. Um, I know there's a company out there. I don't remember the name of it exactly, but that's what they do. They just do the random flow generators. And if you want one, go buy one from him. Um, because, uh, you know, he, I know what it's like to be a 3d printer and, you know, come up with things and then have people steal your idea and then make money on them. I mean, I have, uh, hundreds and hundreds of items that I've created myself that I sell. And then people send me links all the time of people who take my ideas and then just kind of run with them themselves trying to make money. Um, you know, same, you know, with the CO2 attachments, I mean, I've gotten many links from several people who have found people who are doing the same thing, just trying to make a book, quick buck. Um, so I'd say if if, uh, if you want a random flow generator, uh, go buy one from them. I don't remember the name of the company, but shout out to whoever you are. <laughs> okay, um, I just don't, I just, I just don't want to do that to another business. I mean, I know what it's like to to have that happen. But anyways, yeah, no, I don't have random flow generators on my tank. Um, maybe in the future, maybe I'll maybe I'll pick one up. Uh, any ex experience with the Hydro Thirty Twos? Uh, looking to purchase. For an SPS system, I have never used them before. I've never put them on a tank. I've never fiddled with one, so um, I, I don't have any. Ex I don't have any advice or experience, and I can't tell you. Oh, look at the RAS is on the screen. Rest in peace, buddy. Wherever you are, <clears throat> I think he died of old age. Honestly, he was a pretty old dude. Uh, just joined the feed, mate. Uh, so you think the bare bottom tanks are the way to go? I'm planning on eight foot by three foot by two foot wall built in the system. So listen, I love the look of a, a tank with sand in it. Don't get me wrong. But as a business owner, and my primarily primary job is to grow SPS corals uh, as quickly as possible with the maximum amount of flow and a maximum amount of light and a maximum amount of coral strength um, structure. And, you know, regardless of having Big Bertha in there. <laughs> um, yeah, I think bare bottom tanks are the way to go when it comes to that. And, um, but if you're just creating a tank that you want to be beautiful and you just want in your living room and you want that whole realistic na nature looking scenery, then go sand. Um, but as a business thing, I think, uh, I think I like the bare bottom. Now what's good about the next build is we'll have the 300 upstairs and then the 1000 downstairs. And I'll probably put sand in the 300 to be honest with you, cause it's going to be upstairs. It could be with the family and kind of in my, you know, living area, uh, which I can't wait to have 
a saltwater tank in my actual living area again and then have it plumb downstairs in my work area so I can keep everything separate. I'm just, I can't wait for that. Um, that's why I have that planted tank in my kitchen because um, I got rid of the bio cube and I added the planted tank and I just got fish for it too um, because I need something in my non-work area. So uh, yeah, that's my that's my thoughts on that. Uh, how do you cure it? Uh, yes, I'm new to dry rock. Can you tell me how to cure it, please? Uh, yeah, I can give you a quick rundown. But also, if you go to my 300-gallon playlist on the YouTube channel, I have a video specifically on how I cured the rock for this tank. So check that out. But I'll give you a quick rundown. Uh, you're going to take that rock, and you're going to put it in a brute trash can. You're going to add some flow. Uh, primarily, flow from the bottom up would be nice. Or, you know, you'll see how I did it in the video. Um, you're going to put a heater in there. Uh, get the temperature to approximately 79 degrees. And then you're just going to take water from your current system because it's already, you know, got bacteria in it. And then you're just going to put probably 50% of that brute trash can with water during a water change or 100% based on, you know, whatever your water change might be. Excuse me, I'm burping over here. And then you're just going to turn the pumps on, cover it up, um, and let the rock sit in that water for 30 days. Now, depending on the rock, if if it's dirty rock, say it's Pucani or something dirty like I had in the video, then you're going to want to do 50% water changes with new salt water uh, every week or two weeks, again, depending on how dirty it is. But if it's just reef saver dry rock, it's not really dirty. You could probably just leave that one batch of salt water that you pulled out of the original tank there for the full 30 days. Keep it covered up. Don't let any light. And then the bacteria will grow and, uh, you know, live on the rock structure. Now, if you want to put a couple sprinkles of like fish food in there, that's fine. But don't be thrown in whole cubes or anything crazy. That way the bacteria has um, food so it can keep populating. And that's it. You build up a bacteria film on the rock and then you can place it in your tank without any worry. Um, yeah. Hopefully that helps. If not, again, just watch that video. It's it's pretty uh, pretty helpful too. Uh, which black box LED do you recommend? I've been given a, a chance to get two Ecotech Gen 2s used. Not sure if I should jump on it. Now, um, black box LEDs that I recommend, um, none of them. <laughs> None of them. I think if you can get Gen 2 Ecotex, get them. Just get get the Ecotex. Um, black boxes, regardless of where you get them from, it's all Chinese parts. And I granted, there might be Chinese parts in the Ecotex, but they're a little bit high quality, a little bit more high quality uh, than the, uh, the the black box LEDs. So I would pass on them if you can and just get something a little bit better, a little bit more controllability, better spectrum. That's my opinion. Uh, I can't grow eight cans and chalices. Yeah, chalices are, unless they're on the bottom and like under a rock structure, I can't grow those either. <laughs> it's too much light. I can grow them in the tubs. I do have a couple eight cans in my tub underneath the Kessels where there's not a ton of light and um, they're, they're doing pretty well. But any, any, any LPS besides that Lobo in the 300, just no, no bueno. Not good. Um, put an ocean revive over it with a hanging back skimmer. Yep. Yeah. That'll work for the BioCube, no problem. Oh, I fixed my printer. The card was just corrupted. Yeah, that's that sounds about right. I don't use car cards. I use um, you know, I use Raspberry Pis. Which, by the way, I'm actually using a program now. Um, which I don't remember exactly. It's like TSD or whatever. So what this program does is I'm actually setting up cameras again on each one of my printers, and it it will detect. Uh, any failed prints and it will automatically cancel the print, which is really nice. So this program is the monthly subscription, but it allows me to control and see all the printers all, all, all at the same time. So all 22 of them. And if a printer, you know, a print just goes haywire, like it starts lifting off the bed or something just doesn't work right. It will automatically kill the print and send me an alert uh, for that printer. So that's going to save me a lot of filament, a lot of time because things happen. It's just, it is what it is. So uh, pretty excited to get that done. I'm just going to finish adding the cameras and go from there. Um, yeah. It's, uh, it's nice. <clears throat> uh, BCA stole the tech. I don't know what you mean by that. Are they the ones making the flow generators? Hmm. See, I don't know. I don't know if they're the ones that came up with it or they're the ones that took it. I don't know. Um, that's not none of my business, but um, I'm just not stepping on anybody's toes when it comes to them. <clears throat> I have some of the VCA uh, random flow generators sitting in a box. Won't fit the off-brand lock line on the Marine Land Overflow kits. Uh, I have to get some adapters uh, when I think about it. Okay. Uh, is corals 
is corals can handle fluctuations in PO4 in small ranges like dosing up from 0.18 to 2. And after a couple days, tank consumes it and have to dose it again. Yeah, they that's fine. It can handle that. What corals don't like is when you go from 0.2 to 0 and then just let it sit at 0 and then go back up and back down and back up and back down. That's what they don't like um dino likes that <laughs> so uh if you want to avoid dino just don't let it bottom out but yeah that's not a huge fluctuation that's not crazy um and yeah it's going to consume it over days and uh yeah that's not a huge deal all right reef and chill says what's up travis guy here late hope you have a great week merry christmas hey thanks man appreciate it you too <clears throat> uh i've been using the esv two-part and my elk and cow were way up there around 14 cal 600 wow damn stop dosing cow and one milliliter per hour of elk currently 11 cows 490 now been four weeks uh do these stop using do they stop using elements thank you um <clears throat> well i'll tell you right now uh yeah 11 11 elk is uh is too high i mean you're between what seven and 12 DKH is the recommended range anywhere in between there. And you definitely don't want to be at any extreme, any extreme. Man, I'm still freaking losing my voice. One second. I'm trying to tough this out, run out of water. Um, so 11 is still really high. You're not leaving yourself very much wiggle room when it comes to uh, keeping the corals happy, happy. So um, yeah, I mean, ideally corals use up equal parts of uh, calcium alkalinity when it comes to building their skeletal structure. Um, I've never used ESV two parts, so I can't tell you how it works. I can't tell you anything about it because I've never used it. And a lot of you guys give me shit because I'm not using these new products, but <laughs> I, I kind of just stick with what works. But um, yeah, so corals ideally use up equal parts when it comes to consuming one part elk, one part calcium, and then they build their skeletal structures from there. Now, I'm not a marine biologist. I'm sure there's more data to back up that or to, you know, either to confirm or deny it. You're going to have to do a little bit more research on it. But um I would say you're what you're doing. What one milliliter per hour for elk currently at 11. I would cut that back significantly. Obviously, you know, don't do it all at one time, but I would bring your elk at least down to nine. That's a little bit safer. Eight to nine is pretty safe. Um, but 11 is just, is just, is not good. That's just too high. So other than that, I can't really give you any more information. I've, again, I've never used it and uh, yeah, sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah, you are dosing go amounts. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. How many returns do you have? Uh, is it powered by one pump? Do you have a manifold in your sump? What are you running in your sump? Um, well, dude, you got to catch up on my videos, man. I know there's a lot. There's like 800 of them. But either way, go to 300 gallon playlist. You can find all that information, but I'll run through it real quick for you as well. Um, I have I have two return nozzles on the 300. Uh, it's powered by one pump, which is attached to a manifold. That manifold does feed the refugium. And I don't know what else. I think that's it. I do have a secondary pump that covers um, a UV sterilizer and two other tanks. So, yeah. Uh, the, the Sammy says the random flow generators need a dab of glue to hold and stay on, even if you have the genuine lock line. Yeah, I figured 3D printing could be a little weird sometimes. Uh, what version of Raspberry Pi do you run? Um, I don't fucking know. Let me look. Let me pull up a printer. What version? What version? What version? What version? Let me look here. Can I look that up? Mm, 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 mm. Where would I find that information? Plugin software updates. <clears throat> right now it says current version is uh, 1.7.2. Let me check for updates. See if there's anything here. Everything is up to date. Octoprint 1.7.2 is working. It says stable. Um, and I think I updated that today or yesterday. So 1.7.2 for Octoprint. <clears throat> and then I, of course, I'm running... Uh, a whole bunch of uh, add-on plugins to help make my life a little bit easier. I hope that answers your question. I dose only 4.7 milliliters of elk a day and no cal. My trident reads elk at 9.4 and calcium at over 500 a day. Why does my calc never go down? I don't know. Check out your salt, Matt. Uh, you might have some like off readings on your salt. Like, Trust me, if you're dosing and you're getting weird numbers, um, 
double check your salt. And then if, if your numbers are still weird on your salt, double check your test kits. Uh, you might have an issue with your test kit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, I've had 9.5 with 500 cal, no issues. But then again, I'm you know using a calcium reactor, so um, yeah, I would double check your test kits and uh, do a fresh batch of salt salt water because sometimes you get a batch that has high high uh, calcium. It just it is what it is. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, let's see here. Let me scroll down. We're almost done. We're going to wrap this up, probably do a couple more minutes. If you guys have any more questions, feel free to put them in. Uh, mine are solid. Even with a large urchin hanging off them daily, just use a, a clear coral gel on it, and they are set. Cool. Yeah, for the random flow generators. Amazon has Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, oh, yeah. I had the 4s. I thought you were talking about Octoprint. Did you ask what Raspberry Pi or what Octoprint? You might, I have to look back and see. What version of Raspberry Pi? Oh, yeah. Never mind. Yeah, it's it's the fours. I run fours. <clears throat> um, is that the one to get or is there a better? Yeah, just get the fours. I mean, the fours are fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I just get like generic cameras and all sorts of stuff. Ribbon cable. Uh, Matt Mine's the same. I use Octo 2 on my Ender 3. Works great. Yeah, I have no choice. I have to use Octoprint. With the amount of stuff that's going on with the printers, there's so many of them and all the automatic stuff. And if I didn't have if I didn't have Raspberry Pis, I'd be I just couldn't I wouldn't be able to run the business. There'd be no way. Nope. Uh kind of full salt. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask. What salt are you using? Uh I'm about to move across the country next month. Big move. I want to bring some of my rock to sp speed up my restart. Planning on bringing rock in buckets with a battery airstone. 50 watt heater that's a good idea that'll work as long as you got aeration you're good you don't even need the heat um aeration is all you'll need to keep the bacteria alive yep my truck has an uh inverter tips uh, i really uh, don't want to start over dead rock again yeah well what i would do is put in your buckets with the aeration if you want to put the heaters you can but that rock just use it to seed new rock i wouldn't necessarily use that rock in the new tank um you know, it's fresh start, fresh move, fresh life, right? Whatever you're doing, might as well start with some fresh rock. Um, but I would use that rock to do the uh, cycling process for the new stuff, definitely. <clears throat> uh, what uh, do you have cameras on your tank? If yes, what type? I do not. Nope, I don't. No, I mean I have cameras all throughout. You know, the fish room and the house and stuff, and stuff, and then you know outside security stuff. But um, I have them. I have them on my printers for work reasons, and then I have a couple of them. Like when I go away for an extended period of time, I have them checking out the sump, but I just place them down to you know keep an eye on the sump. But other than that, nothing crazy. Uh, so totally new to 3D printing. What is Octoprint? It's a software that allows you to basically fully automate your printing. You can send basically allows you to send prints to a printer without having to use an SD card. Um, but yeah. Do you like Convict uh, tanks? I've never had one before. Um, comic tank. Let me let me look them up. I think I know what they look like. Oh yeah, I've seen those before. Maybe I've, maybe I've had one. Maybe I've had one. I don't remember. They're actually not that cheap either. Sixty bucks for what? How big is this Joker? Okay, so it can get eight inches. But I want to know how big this guy is. Oh, uh, they're not even telling you. Uh, he looks cool. I mean, he's pretty cool looking. He's got the stripes. Yeah, I mean, I'd give it a whirl. Yeah. I mean, I'm a big Tang guy. I mean, I really like Tang, so I'm not I'm not too picky about them, except for Big Bertha. I don't like her, but we have my I have my reasons. Her personality is pretty cool. She eats out of my hand. She's she lets me pet her, which is kind of weird, petting fish, but it could be worse, I suppose. Um, but uh yeah, I, I don't like her for other reasons. <clears throat> uh my T5 fixture uh bugged out on me. I'm looking to get a couple LED fixtures for my 75 gallon any suggestions on something that won't break the bank hopefully um um i mean if you're really on a budget i mean you can go with ship box leds like black box leds you can go with those you know the mars aquas or the sb reflights you can go with that stuff if you want um i'm just not i mean they work i grew out the 125 and the, with those lights it was fine they work um but they don't i mean they don't work as well as the other stuff, in my opinion. 
I have to say in my opinion, or someone's going to get offended and send me a freaking four page email that I'm going to have to delete halfway through because I can't read it all. Um, <laughs> which by the way, if you guys start sending me long emails of bitching about stuff, I literally, I, I read half of it. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, I got other stuff to do. I never finished them just so you know. So if you're going to say something mean, make sure you put it in the beginning. I try to tell people, you know, if you're going to be insulting or something, make sure you put it in the beginning of the email because I'm not going to make it that far. <laughs> but yeah, you can buy, you know, the cheaper ones if you want. Um, now, I don't know how big your tank is, but even the um, Mar uh, the Aqua HD, the Aqua Illumination HD Primes, those are those are pretty good lights too. I like those. Uh, I live in Trinidad. Uh, there's always warm weather here. Do I still need a heater? Uh, yeah, for consistency wise, yeah, you definitely need a heater. Because, uh, you know, if it does dip down for whatever reason, I mean, I think I think having a heater is a good idea, at least as a backup. Yeah, I don't know. My calcium is off off the charts over five. So I'm just waiting for it to come down and dosing calcium. Yeah, that's fine. You can wait for it. But I would double check with your test kits uh, to make sure they're good and you know, borrow friends or whatever. Uh, but also uh, new batch of salt and maybe your salt high. I mean, it happens. Make And then, <clears throat> and then make sure you guys are. Um, mixing up your salt before you actually, you know, put it in the RO water to make a fresh batch. Make sure you're mixing up the salt itself uh, just to kind of get everything evenly, you know, if it's been sitting for a while or whatever. Uh, I'm going to answer a couple more. I'm going to head out. It's been almost an hour. Sweet. Uh, have you ever used ChemiClean? And if so, what are the side effects on coral? So I have used it before. And uh, I didn't really notice any side effects on SPS tank. But then again, I didn't have a ton of cyanobacteria. But this stuff does work. Again, understand that ChemiClean is just a Band-Aid. You have to get your phosphates under control. So, yeah, you could use it to temporarily relieve the nasty look of cyanobacteria. But it's going to come back in a week or so if you don't get your phosphates under control. So yeah, it works. I haven't seen any ill effects on corals that I know of, and that's SPS. I don't know how it is with soft corals or LPS, but at least for SPS, it wasn't, it wasn't anything crazy. Uh, let me see here. I'm going to try to see what other questions we have. <clears throat> I can only imagine emails you get, man. When I posted the picture of those, those deer for my veterans hunt on the fourth, I lost 100 Instagram followers that day alone. And uh, I got emails blown up on the chat. Uh, man, people were just so offended that I, I, you know, killed a couple deer. Mm. Which, by the way, today, if you want to know, I finally got the head of that doe off the back of my truck. It was, <laughs> I opened it up. I'm like, oh, you're still in here. And just the head of that doe. My bad. So, yeah, my neighbor watched me drag it over to the dumpster. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah is what it is um yeah people get offended i get stuff all the time i don't really I talk, to be honest with you it's, it's been what five years since i've been on here five years on youtube i've i mean i've had everything i've had people threaten my family threaten my kids saying they know where i live what they're gonna do listen if you know where i'm living you're gonna do something about it then do something about it other than that shut the fuck up <laughs> like just stop like you don't waste your time threatening me if you're gonna do it just fucking do do it man Trust me, do it. <clears throat> anyway, so let's go and move on. Uh, the Ocean Revives are decently cheap, and I have had a lot of luck with them. Seems to be a little better quality than the Black Box. I agree with that. I've used them before. I can agree with that. Any, re any recommendations for reputable heater for a 200-gallon tank? I have no clue. Um, I run generic or basic, uh, I think, I think Phoenix heaters in my 300, and they're well, it's 500 gallons, and they run off the Apex. They don't have a built-in thermostat. I can't give you a brand that I would recommend at the moment. Oh, God, it's good a second. <clears throat> I live in Guam. Uh, there are so many tangs in the wild. People eat them as food. Yeah, I've, I've seen that before. I would love to try a tang. I'm about ready to make a live stream video, Big Bertha, if she keeps jacking up my tank. I have a feeling I probably will get flagged for that. <laughs> Uh, so no, I'm not going to eat Big Bertha. Someone's going to get offended and send me an email. Can't believe you threatened to eat Big Bertha. She's so cute. She's not cute. She's a dickhead. Uh, check your local Facebook marketplace for used lights and people upgrade for Christmas. That's a good idea. Deer tacos, baby. That's right. Um, I actually, there's one of our, one of our trainers at the gym. Uh, one of the coaches there. I think I, man, I gave him one, two, three, four, like 
seven pounds of deer meat the other day. Uh, two different sessions. I gave him some more tonight. Um, well, I mean, I've given the neighbors some. I've given, I think I've given probably 40 pounds of meat away from the deer this year already, um, which still leaves me like 110 pounds for myself. And I still have pretty much all of last year's deer in the other freezer. So I have enough deer meat to last me a while. And speaking of that, I'm going hunting on Monday. Uh, a friend and I, we're going out and uh, doing archery. So it's going to be cold. So I'm not pulling the bow back. That person's going to have to pull it back because <laughs> it is too cold me pulling 85 pounds. But I'll bring it just in case I get, you know, motivated to pull it back. Uh, yeah, I still have two two doe tags to film. I have uh, a black box. I don't, I don't know how to freaking say that without butchering it. Uh, when I upgrade, I will not be using them again. I can't get the lights adjustable spectrum. I like the par ranges that I want to keep. Cool. Uh, how are the low boys holding up? I'm thinking about getting one, but I have heard mixed opinions about them leaking. I would say not get one. Um, they're cool. I mean, if you've been here for a while, Jonathan, I broke quite a few of those over the years, mainly nothing. Okay. I did break one, like adjusting the output nozzle, like the lock line. I cracked the back of one doing that, which is super annoying, especially when it's already installed in, in the wall. Um, I broke two of them, like smashed them off the door frame, which, I can't blame the little boy for that, but um, I would say if you have another option, a thicker glass option, go with it. Um, there's been stories of the bottoms breaking out, all sorts of stuff. But if you can build a decent quality level stand with proper supports and you can get a low boy for a good price, it's worth a shot. Just understand that I wouldn't be leaning on it. I wouldn't be putting any pressure on it and don't adjust the lock line in the back because <laughs> apparently that breaks it too. Uh, yeah. You can order one of my overflow box kits. You can have a pretty cool overflow box for it. Just saying. <clears throat> uh, if you're battling Dino or Sino, you got low boy P low PO4s. Likely try Brightwall's Neo Nitro Neo Foss Plus UV works beautiful. How about you just buy my? I want to say Travis. Why don't you just buy Fish of Hex uh, nitrates and phosphates? Sammy, why are you promoting other companies? Shit on my live stream, dude. What the heck, man? I thought we were friends. Not cool, dude. Not cool. Not cool. I just sent like five gallons of that stuff the other day. Appreciate whoever you were. I don't remember your name. Um, sorry, I'm so late. Hey, it's all right. I'm sorry. Right. It's not like you're in a different time zone or anything. New York. Uh, the tank is four feet. I have one black box, but it's not enough. I was thinking of around three hundred dollars each. Probably need to give two or take need need two give or take. Uh, there are AI primes at the local shop. Mm -hmm. four feet long depending on the tank you probably only need like four ai primes personally i don't know you got, i mean budget i mean you got three hundred dollars each you know, it's up to you i have a pink spiny urchin i might make make sushi out of a tank wreck or two you're not the first person to say that i'll tell you that right now i used to have one of those long black spiny urchins Back in the day, and then that Joker got me one too many times, and boy, does that hurt! You think you could avoid him, but you like if you're reaching around the tank, you're like la 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 la. He's like, "Hey man, let me spike you." But uh, yeah, I don't haven't done an urchin in a long time. They don't really do well in SPS tanks, at least not my not my uh, opinion. Damn, bro, I should make another tip uh, trip for deer meat and corals. <laughs> Tanya, I got a lot of deer meat. I'm hoping to snag two more this year. I know that. I know I'm going to donate one of them. If I get both, I'm going to, or well, the next doe, regardless if uh, I get the second one, the next deer is going to be donated period. Um, but uh, if I can get the second one, then I'll just chop him up to her. Why not? <clears throat> Why not? You know, uh, Repum, I is interviewing Chris from ACI aquaculture. Uh, gig is great, passionate, and just knows how to make healthy coral. Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, four foot tank. You need four AI primes. I have two ocean revives and a four foot 18 for tank. Good success. Cool. <clears throat> All right, guys. I think we're good. I think we're at an hour. I think we did pretty good for the live stream, given the fact that uh, I'm out of water and I lost my voice and we ended up uh, getting disconnected a whole bunch in the beginning. But I appreciate everybody being here. I appreciate the questions. Uh, I'm going to try to get another video out before the end of the month. No promises. Um, my ear is not doing very well. I'm probably going to have to go to the VA next week if they can't get it to drain properly. Um, 
yeah, it just comes with the territory, I guess. But anyways, yeah, I'm going to try to get another video out. I hope you guys have a good Christmas. Hope you guys get everything you want from Santa Claus or whoever's giving you your stuff. And um, yeah, I'll see you next week, hopefully. If not, I'll see you after the new year, okay? God bless. Peace.